great, great, great. So hello, welcome everyone uh, to this talk. Thanks for joining. Uh, very pleased to have uh, Andreas Wild and Matthias Richter today with us to talk about uh, Intel's uh, SNN framework called Lava. Um, so this uh, session is is sponsored by by TU Delft. Uh, so thanks, a quick shout out uh, to them for that. Thanks, thanks a lot for that. And um, um, yeah, we are open neuromorphic. We are like a community of like open source collaborators, both from industry, from uh, labs, academia, and uh, we just like um, yeah, met. Um, basically, we started collaborating online. Uh, there is uh, blog posts out there. There's um, software. There's code out there. Uh, so please have a look at our uh, also Discord channel. And there's lots of discussions about like uh, research and seminars and and just news uh, about neuromorphic uh, on there. So please check that out as well. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. I think so. I'm quickly going to introduce the the speakers today. So uh, first we have uh, Andreas Wild, uh, who is who received his PhD in in physics at uh, the Technical University in Munich in 2013, after which he joined Intel right away and became a senior researcher uh, at the Intel Neuromorphic Computing Lab since uh, 2015, where he leads the algorithms research. So very pleased to have you, thank you. And um, Matthias Richter is a research scientist uh, in the same lab, in the same uh, Intel labs and uh, Neuromorphic Computing Intel labs and where he leads the application software team, developing commercial software solution based on neuromorphic technology. And before, his, before he joined the, uh, the team, he worked as a postdoc and PhD student on neural process models of higher cognition at the Institute for Neural Computation in Bochum. So with that being said, uh, the stage is yours. Feel free, I will um, stop sharing my screen. And uh, please feel free to take over. Okay, so I'm trying. The, there's a queue for everyone uh, interested. There's a QA and a um, like box, dialogue box out there. Um, we can also, if you're interested, hand you the microphone. So Fabrizio, how, how are we going to do that? If we if someone wants to ask a question in, in person, then we can just uh, enable the microphone, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they simply ask a question either in the okay. chat or in the QA saying I want to speak or something. Or and if you I raise your hand it. or something like that, if you yeah. raise your hand and then we can. Uh, yes. And um, so Matthias and Andreas told me that uh, they're happy to be interrupted by questions. So please uh, feel free to, to post uh, or raise a hand anytime. Thank you. Please go ahead, Andreas. Yes. Okay, thanks a lot, Gregor, for the introduction and uh, welcome everyone to our um, yeah, intro or overview of the LAVA software framework. Um, um, as Gregor said, my name is Andreas Wild. Um, <clears throat> I'm part of the Intel Neuromorphic Computing Lab. As you probably know, we've developed um, LOEHI, LOEHI 1, LOEHI 2 over the last couple of years and then finally also um, over the past maybe two years, roughly, um, we've started working on this um, software framework that we call LAVA. And um, yeah, me and Mattis will give you an overview of um, what this is, um, why we've built it, um, and uh, show you a little bit uh, what you can do with it today and uh, where we're heading um, in the future. So with that, let's get started. If my, okay. Okay, so um, we'll start with what is so, oh, LAVA. Sorry, Andres, uh, your screen is not shared yet. Oh, is it not? Sorry. Um, then better go back. Why did this happen? Um, sorry. I thought. Uh, I guess I didn't press the share button uh, a second time. Okay, should be working now, right? Yes, we can see the PowerPoint. Cool, perfect, thank you. So okay. if, if you, uh, yeah. yes, thank you. Okay, sorry for that distraction. 
Okay, so um, I was just talking to this title slide um, a minute ago. Okay, with this, let's get started um, and talk about for briefly what is Lava and um, why did we as Intel uh, launch this open software framework? So Lava um, is um, uh, an, an open source software framework for neuromorphic computing from our perspective. And obviously it was sparked by the arrival of LOE2 about yeah, in fault or so um, two years ago. Um, and um, and, and um, of course, LOE2 um, is this chip that probably um, you already know by, by now and have heard a lot about it. Um, it's our second generation neuromorphic architecture uh, is about 10x um, faster in processing compared to our LOE1 chip, um, has a much higher integer bandwidth, um, supports a way higher neuron count, offers more flexibility in terms of programming the, 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 the infrastructure and the compute capabilities or the neurons and the synapse on chip. It supports new features like graded spikes are not just binary spikes any longer. And, um, um, and it also provides uh, new learning capabilities like three-factor learning, which wasn't possible on um, Loihi on Loihi 1. Um, admittedly, Loihi uh, Lava is still somewhat oriented or centered around Loihi because that's certainly and uh, what we needed it most for from our own perspective. But really we have uh, our, our ambition um, is much uh, greater than that or uh, than making um, Lava just the Intel SDK for Loihi. Um, it's really meant to be an open source software framework for neuromorphic computing, also extending um, to, other, to other architectures. But as I said, um, we obviously, um, coming from Intel, started to uh, first make it work with Loihi. So what is Lava? Um, Lava is a full software stack um, ranging from the runtime layer from the hardware inter level, from the hardware level itself to a compiler um, that compiles models um, to different types of hardware, um, uh, all the way up to algorithm and application libraries. Um, the programming model is in a way like the hardware um, brain inspired in that it exposes an explicitly parallel and asynchronous um, programming model um, where you have parallel asynchronous independent processes that communicate with each other via message passing. Um, they operate in an event-based manner, um, compute and communicate in event-based manner um, and asynchronously. So we've tried to, in a way, up-level and preserve that um, programming paradigm that we find at the brain, at the hardware level, all the way up to the user interface, uh, to the API level, but make it uh, usable and hopefully um, con um, convenient and uh, productively to use. Um, as I said, it was obviously seeded by us, by Intel, um, but we've made it open source um, already a while ago, uh, and we're trying to make it uh, increasingly more community driven. And also, we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll also go over some examples later on uh, to show um, what com community contributions um, we have seen so far in the Lava software framework. Sorry, Andreas, uh, can I already interrupt? You? So course. there's already a question. So when will be the when will be able to use the custom three factor learning rule? on Loihi 2 and custom multiple input synapses, uh, which are different inputs without summing them up at the dendritic accumulators, basically multiple dendritic accumulation and mapping. Okay, so this is already an expert question. Um, these are two, I would say, yeah, uh, quite detailed capabilities that Lava supports on the Loihi architecture. Um, I think we'll actually, I actually have a two slides or that, or something uh, like that on, on that later, um, but I can quickly comment on that. Um, I mean, three-factor learning um, is already supported um, right now. It's at least supported on CPU, and I think um, we have it also released already on on, on Loihi. Um, however, I admit that um, our maybe tutorial and documentation support right now is not um, the greatest in this area, so maybe um, it's not really out there. But I, but, but I'll show actually uh, something that we're building around these capabilities uh, pretty soon. Um, this was learning. Then there was another question with multiple dendritic accumulators. Another expert question. Um, just for context, since I'm asked, answer it, answering it right now, um, there is the ability that you can have multiple neurons on a neural core on Lava that you on Loihi that you can use through Lava, and neurons in on Loihi um, can receive inputs um, not just from different 
axons, obviously, uh, but then those uh, the inputs coming in from different axons can be accumulated in different types of, let's say, channels. We call them dendritic accumulators. And so um, this is a feature that we have essentially enabled, and it's working, but it's not released yet. And I think, um, and um, yeah, I would say, I, I, we haven't really we haven't decided on a release date. I would say maybe at the end of June or so, um, this this feature should get released as well. So um, whoever um, great, thank you. Asked it um, should just be a, a bit more patient, <laughs> but yeah, it'll, it'll come soon. Okay, if that's it, then I'll move on. Um, so yeah, why why lava? Why do we create it? So obviously, as I um, alluded to earlier. Um, we of course we needed a different, more powerful software framework when we built or when we when we when we got Lava when we built uh, sorry when we built Loe two uh, because it had a lot new uh, a richer feature set that went beyond um, Loe one and uh, therefore our we didn't want to um, continue developing our somewhat more limited earlier SDK um, for Loe one so that was certainly one motivating factor but then on the other hand we also observed that there are just a lot of different types of um, um, software tools in the whole neuromorphic um, um, community. And um, we didn't uh, see that there is, let's say, necessarily a lot of convergence um, in the whole neuromorphic space for uh, different front software front ends and different hardware backends. So we tried to, so we wanted to make an attempt to bring a somewhat more convergence um, to the space um, by providing this or by developing and seeding this open source software framework Lava um, to um, um, not only support um, Loihi, Loihi 2, um, but in principle develop a hardware, a software architecture that can also be extended to other sensory and, um, and, and actuator modalities, but also of course other computing backends. And we support this in a way in a limited way so far in that we support Loihi and CPUs, GPUs and, and, and starting to support uh, various different types of sensors. Um, um, but yeah, um, we, we, we haven't made a lot of progress ourselves in terms of supporting other neuromorphic backends. That's something uh, we would be open to perhaps uh, help the community with. Um, another important goal, of course, is um, um, or was behind Lava that we wanted to make this still somewhat exotic um, hardware systems like neuromorphic neuromorphic, neuromorphic hardware uh, a bit uh, or make them more accessible um, to to non-expert developers, to people who don't have maybe a PhD in neuroscience or in computational neuroscience or in neuromorphic computing and things like that. Um, in the end, and, and with the, with the end goal, of course, to accelerate adoption of neuromorphic um, technologies in general. Um, and, and therefore bring um, these orders of magnitude gains that we see in, um, in neuromorphic architectures in general um, um, out um, and, and expose them and make them more widely available. And so uh, we see that Lava could potentially be a kind of hub um, between um, the users that want to use algorithms or develop algorithms and applications, um, different potentially different types of hardware platforms and systems, um, benchmarks, um, transparent benchmarks that maybe benchmark a certain application or algorithm potentially on uh, transparently on different uh, hardware backends seamlessly side by side next to each other. Um, so um, that's more basically part of the long-term vision that we um, uh, uh, have, have for Lava here. Okay, so, but now uh, with this introduction, uh, you may wonder if you don't know already by using Lava, um, what you can do with Lava today. Um, and so with the next couple of slides, I'll just give a brief overview um, of what this is. So here on the left, um, we just have a relatively compact, um, brief, but comprehensive overview of the full Lava software stack. As I mentioned in the beginning, um, it stretches all the way from the hardware layer, um, where we support different types of backends, CPUs, um, and Loe, obviously, um, all the way up to applications, products, and services that we at Intel are increasingly uh, trying to uh, develop on top of it. And so what we find in the middle is, well, we have this hardware interface layer. Uh, we have the runtime that, well, executes at runtime to um, facilitate um, message passing between modules or neural networks on these on these backends uh, between each other. So to, to facilitate, facilitate computation, uh, communication and computation. Um, um, and then, of course, we have uh, the compiler that sits on top of it, um, whose job is obviously to compile uh, models specified at a high level um, to compile this down to um, the different uh, types of backends that we have here. Um, um, and then uh, we have a 
a somewhat intermediate level API, um, which allows the user to construct algorithms and applications in terms of parallel asynchronous processes that communicate via each other um, through message passing, as I alluded to earlier. Um, and then uh, on top of that, on top of that API, um, Lava comes with a, uh, what we call a standard process library. Um, that's just, that's the name implies, a library of standard processes that you typically um, need, like, I don't know, your, your convolutional layer or your leaky integrant fire neuron or, or things like that. <clears throat> and uh, so these, these are meant to be generic. Um, it's um, constantly growing. Um, and then on top of that, we have various um, algorithm libraries um, for different types of, let's say, paradigms. So um, deep learning. So this comes with our Slayer tools that you're probably familiar with for training deep neural networks. Then we have an optimization library, um, which uh, provides more and more constrained optimization algorithms like um, quadratic unconstrained binary optimization or locally competitive algorithm and things like that. So we have these different algorithm libraries. And then, as I said, yeah, on top of that, um, we or potentially others um, uh, are building applications and um, and and uh, and potentially other services and products um, going forward in the future. So what does this um, software stack at a high level um, um, support now um, beyond what I've said? So um, the compiler by now is cross-platform in a sense um, that it supports low EE and uh, CPU mostly. So you can build models that are either just running on CPU if you basically want to simulate them. Um, you can have models, uh, but, but, but you can also have models that are <clears throat> mostly running on Luigi or that just span across. So you can have a heterogeneous arrangement of different types of processes or models that basically execute where they run best, either on Luigi or on, or on, on, on CPU or potentially some other uh, types of type of backend in the future. Um, you can program um, in Lava mostly in Python. Um, so that's uh, hopefully convenient. But then um, there are some aspects, for instance, when you're working with Loihi, um, where you can also, for instance, use C to pro program some of our embedded cores within Loihi, for instance, um, through the, uh, so, so, and then and there, then there are some Loihi 2 specific features that Lava supports, obviously, uh, such as uh, programming microcode or microcoded neuron models um, in Lava for Luigi. Uh, we have um, synaptic plasticity, three-factor, two-factor learning um, supported uh, both in simulation on CPU and, um, and on Luigi too. Um, our, um, yeah, we, we also have a, a, a set of like auxiliary tools that are, that are not shown here, like uh, a utility for, for, for performance, power, um, activity or memory profiling. So you can see what's going on, how performant your algorithm is, how, how efficiently your algorithm, for instance, uses the memory um, um, of Loihi, uh, how much power it consumes, how fast it runs. Um, and so, yeah, you can do debugging and diagnostic. You can use it for debugging and diagnostic purposes. And then, yeah, as I'll get to in a moment, we have these various algorithm libraries. And um, yeah, and then of course, um, we're also providing some documentation and tutorials um, could always be improved, but um, there is something. So and then, so, sorry yep. um, for the last set. So there's Fabrizio, who has a question and also there's an open one. Uh, so go ahead, Fabrizio. Yeah, we have uh, some questions. There was someone from the audience that wanted to ask a question by voice. I should have enabled the mic. Yeah, go so ahead. Sarah. Sarah Sharif, if you want to ask a question, cool. Hi. No, I'm okay. I'm enjoying learning. Okay, great. Because you had raised your hand, that's why we, we thought you wanted to ask a question. Yeah. Okay, nice. There, there, there is, however, yeah, also but... some questions in the audience. So um very new to Lava here. Could this stack could this stack support integration of event-based cameras for computer vision? Uh, yes, and Matis will talk about this in a couple of slides. So we're we're it, it, it doesn't it doesn't do it um, very well today. But um, as, as I said, um, this is something we're currently working on, and uh, and Matis will share our overall plan and uh, release timeline for that. Great, thank you. And then there's another one about. Um, when will we have custom neural models probing in Loihi 2? We did implement our own uh, microcoded monitoring tools, but an official solution would be more efficient. Um, this is custom neural model probing. Maybe reach out 
to me or us afterwards because in principle i mean we have we have we have a capability which we call like monitors i'm, I'm kind of monit mentioning here with activity um profiler um which allow you to attach probes to um state variables of a process and that could include those of a custom neuron model um since you're asking this question it seems like maybe something doesn't work so um yeah so my answer is it should work but if it doesn't um let's let's talk <laughs> nice and there's another one how can i access the unique characteristics of individual neurons in the layer using the current version of lava it appears that the current implementation assigns the same characteristics to all neurons within a dense layer um yes so that's i guess a limitation of how some of the processes are written um and, and and I would say this is maybe done for was done for convenience. If you need that type of additional flexibility to make I don't know every neuron in a process different, for instance, then um, you could modify or enhance the underlying process model to jump forward to some of the terminology we use inside Lava. Um, Again, I would say this is maybe somewhat of a more detailed question. In, 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 I mean, in principle, it, this, it, it works, but it's somewhat of a more detailed technical question um, to answer um, in terms of really telling you how to do it. And um, maybe as part of the tutorial that um, Mattis will go through, maybe you can maybe you can uh, in a more, in a later on jump to the place where you could in principle do this, then we can maybe answer it more clearly there uh, rather than on this slide at the moment, um, because right now I'm just probably talking in, in very abstract terms and maybe it becomes clearer when we perhaps uh, look, at an, mm -hmm. look at some example code later. Yeah, I can right. give that a Thanks, yeah, so, that maybe, so maybe if you open up the, um, I don't know, process model for the lift neuron or so, then we could at least point out where it could be done. Mm -hmm. And I have a question. So here on the left hand side, you you say that uh, you support the GPU um, backends as well. The right hand side, it just says CPU. Is this uh, is this uh, basically does this mean CPU and GPU automatically? It, it we, we use it in a sense synonymously because yeah. to the, the degree to which we support GPU at the moment um, is that well, you could use. Um, TensorFlow or PyTorch eventually uh, within a process basically to implement a process um, and thereby just use this capability to run um, through on, on GPU. It's not like we have, let's say, custom process models written in CUDA, for instance, um, but you can use higher tools, higher level tools like TensorFlow or PyTorch or PuPy or something like this if you cool. wanted to. And there's one last, uh, there's another question in the audience. Can we install Lohi in uh, out? in a high performance computing system or is it cloud based access on intel only uh no no so i mean low yeah okay we'll, we'll we'll also get to this in a in a second um how the loihi software framework is like partially public and partially proprietary um i guess we'll maybe we'll we'll cover it there but um to answer it just very briefly um loihi in gen uh, sorry lava maybe i'm sometimes mixing these names up without noticing um, but lava is uh open source but it has proprietary plugins, for instance, for the Loihi backend. Um, and then, so, and, and you can download and run the open source version free on your laptop if you want to. Um, um, but this doesn't give you access to, to Loihi necessarily, unless you have, um, unless you're part of the IRNRC. Um, and then, we just offer basically running Lava and Loihi in our cloud as basically a convenience service. But if you have your own Loihi systems, or if you just want to use the CPU backend, you can always just run it on your own computer or wherever you want. Maybe we'll hear more about how people can engage with the INRC or later on. Yeah, we can um, touch on this as well. Yeah. Thank you. Familiar. Okay. That, what, was that it? Or are there more questions? Yes, please, please go ahead. Continue. Okay. Okay, so just to complete on uh, the aspect of what you can do with Lava today, as I mentioned here, we have the full Lava software stack and these algorithm libraries. And so in this next slide here um, is just giving a brief overview of what uh, type of algorithm libraries we have today and which we are considering or um, suggesting could be built in the future, perhaps by us or by the community. So um, 
starting um, as one of our most mature and one of our oldest um, algorithm libraries building on top of the core Lava API is LavaDL. Um, and as the name suggests, it's um, for deep learning. So um, this comes mostly with the Slayer 2.0 tool that maybe many of you are potentially um, already aware of. Um, it allows you to train uh, deep neural models, um, feed forward and recurrent architectures. We support a number of uh, different types of neuron models. Um, it, it allows you to do direct um, um, training as well as conversion-based training or yeah, conversion-based creation of um, deep neural networks um, in, in Lava. And, um, um, and of course, uh, it also comes with like cap capabilities and utilities to do hardware aware training, for instance, for Luigi directly. So you can do quantization aware training um, in Slayer uh, for Luigi. And then um, in principle, you do this standalone on your, on your GPU or CPU. Um, and then there is an, uh, and then it also provides tools, um, uh, which we call, for instance, NetX or the network exchange format um, that allows you then to take this Slayer trained or Lava DL trained model and convert that into a, into a, into a model or into a, a arrangement of processes that then executes um, in Lava and then you can, um, and, or on Luigi, for instance, and then you can also couple it um, with other processes um, defined um, in Lava. Um, the other one uh, pretty mature uh, library uh, that we have released for a while and that's con constantly growing is the Lava Optimization Library. So um, I don't know, some of you uh, may not be familiar with this and uh, may wonder what this is. So, um, and, this, and this is something that has grown out of our own internal research around Loihi. Um, and, um, and, and so what, what, what motivated us to create the software library was, this, was the recognition over the years that um, for certain types of um, constraint optimization um, algorithms, such as um, constra solving constraint satisfaction problems, SAT problems, uh, but also continuous gradient descent based optimization problems, such as quadratic programming or um, sparse coding done, for instance, with Lasso or um, LCA, um, we, we, we found that such type of iterative optimization or constraint optimization algorithms um, can leverage neuromorphic architectures um, very well um, and achieve orders of magnitude gains um, or actually the highest gains in, in, in energy and delay um, on Loihi, for instance, because, well, they make, they take advantage, these algorithms or these iterative optimization algorithms can be represented as um, recurrent neural networks. And we find those um, to leverage neuromorphic architectures like Loihi very well, uh, because they obviously also leverage things like computing in memory um, or computing very near memory and, and event-based computing. Um, and there has been a lot of, or a rich literature, of course, over the years um, um, that we didn't invent um, that have shown that, um, yeah, you can uh, solve a lot of these types of constraint optimization problems in a neuromorphic way. So. Um, We've already built very various solutions on Lohi One with our previous SDK to solve, let's say, things like constraint optimized, uh, constraint satisfaction problems, uh, the famous Sudoku example, and things like that. Uh, so we've done this in the past, and now then with Lava, with Loi Two and Lava, uh, we've started building this um, Lava Optim or Lava Optimization Library um, that today provides. Um, um, solvers like re with relatively high level user interfaces uh, for quadratic programming, quadratic unconstrained binary optimization, locally competitive algorithm for solving, for instance, sparse coding problems or uh, Bayesian optimization um, to solve yeah, such kind of problems. And we're working on others, um, partially us, partially um, members from our community are doing this as well. And so, um, yeah, we're tr constantly trying to grow this library of optimization um, solvers here, which can be used as standalone um, um, solvers um, to just solve an isolated uh, Cubo problem, for instance. Uh, but you can also couple these processes with other modules or with other processes inside Lava if you want to, if, if, you, if you have a use for that. For instance, you could couple a deep neural network trained with Lava DL with an optimization uh, solver that then, I don't know, uses the output of the DNN to uh, solve an online optimization problem, for instance. So yeah, um, uh, and then uh, we have another, one of our other released libraries is the Lava, Dy Lava DNF library uh, for dynamic neural fields. Um, this is a library um, that I guess is not as mature yet as these other two, um, but it's um, growing um, constantly. And um, so it allows you to do, um, or allows you to build things like um, 
um, attractor models or models with attractor dynamics, um, um, such as yeah, the dynamic neural fields. Um, that's uh, something that Mattis is actually, I guess, more qualified to talk about since this is, uh, was a large part of his PhD and, uh, and postdoc. Um, so you can use this for stabilizing um, temporal input, um, perhaps collected via event-based cameras, um, uh, do selective data processing, or um, build, for instance, dynamic working memories. And then finally, um, we have our Lava VSA um, uh, library for vector symbolic architectures. This has been in the, in the in preparation for a while. We're finally getting closer to an actual first release. I think that should also be um, uh, around maybe end of June for, uh, or uh, or July. Um, so that's when you can expect a first release of this uh, of this um, VSA library. That basically allows you to do uh, things like com symbolic computing with high dimensional sparse uh, vectors um, um, that uh, with which you can basically form alg algebras or describe algebras um, to for, for perform, for instance, opera uh, operations like binding or um, uh, image factorization. So there is some work that Pax and Frady or um, Alpha Renner um, from INI have done very nice work um, building on top of this um, VSA framework. And so, yeah, um, expect a first release of this, uh, maybe end of June or uh, sometime in July. And then there are um, several other um, libraries that are conceivable um, that um, we haven't worked on ourselves yet, but obviously um, um, there could be um, specialized libraries for robotic tools, um, for evolutionary optimization. There are actually some works going to this direction um, for, yeah, for instance, lava evolution, uh, for evolu combining or integrating um, evolutionary techniques. And then generally um, what we're also working on perhaps in combination with lava VSA are just various tools for signal processing and, um, and, and, other, and other parts. And um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll share some of those developments, especially that are going on in the community um, with you um, later in the talk as well. Sorry, Andres, um, two yeah. questions. Uh, does lava DL support online learning? Um, Lava DL is an is, is a tool for um, training of uh, training networks offline. Um, so just like PyTorch, um, I mean it's as you know it's built on PyTorch, so um, it's nothing that runs on Loe itself. However, there is a recent enhancement uh, that we started working on um, um, with some of our community members, which I'll also get to later. Um, in which Lava DL is now starting to support um, differentiable um, plasticity. What, what this means is that um, uh, Lava DL now supports um, to include, let's say, the learning engine of Loihi as part of the overall training loop, such that you can optimize things like the learning rule that then later runs online on Loihi um, as part of offline training. Cool. Thank you. And can we use uh, Loi for quantum machine learning? For quantum machine learning? Well, Loi is not a quantum computer, <laughs> but um, there are, have been, of course, and that's probably what the person asking the question is alluding to. I mean, there have been various approaches, of course, to um, port, uh, for instance, algorithms like Cubo um, or to solve, okay, no. So th there is this class of algorithms like uh, quadratic unconstrained binary optimization, um, which can be represented as an Ising problem. And so this has traditionally been uh, a domain where the quantum computer community, um, um, or that's something that the quantum computer community um, has been tried to leverage and, and map onto these types of devices. Um, of course, as some of you may know, um, today's quantum computers have some challenges in just scaling up. And so also increasingly over the last couple of years, um, there have been more and more efforts um, to basically do some sort of classically or quantum inspired classical quantum computing, um, which um, has led to the development or porting these types of algorithms to neuromorphic architectures or other custom designed ASICs uh, specifically for solving such type of Ising problems or Cubo problems. And indeed, um, <laughs> um, if, if you consider this quantum machine learning, then you could say, um, yes, you can solve, for instance, Cubo problems on Loi. And we, we actually have a Cubo solver, as I mentioned earlier, um, that runs um, very efficiently on Loi here. So I don't know whether this is, whether you would consider this uh, doing quantum machine learning. Um, but yeah, sounds you, good. You... Thank you, she, she says. Okay, good. <laughs>
Okay, if there are no more questions, then I think um, this is the part where Mattis will take over for the next, I don't know, half an hour or so. Yeah, uh, let me quickly see that I messed this up here. We actually have three my, my, Meanwhile, questions. there's a few questions that just popped up. Um, so okay, then uh, I I'll see... stop sharing and you, Mattis, you just share whenever you can. I think I am sharing. Oh, you are already good. Okay. okay. I see the Brian simulator is not supported yet, but is it possible to do some simple SNN tasks if I have an SDDB weight update data from a neuromorphic device? Uh, Brian, um, so there is actually a community project, which I will also talk about towards the end. Um, and and there is a, so there is a community project called Brian to Lava that is about uh, making Lava and Loihi by extension accessible through the Brian to interface. So that is actually, released already. It doesn't support the Loihi backend yet, but um, you can go out and search for Brian to Lava um, in the meantime, uh, until I get to it maybe in half an hour. Thank you. Uh, and then there's some more technical questions. I'm wondering if we should keep those for the end a bit, I think. So maybe Matthias, if you can continue for the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to, um, so we, we talked about the, the software stack, this, this vertical thing, and I wanted to clarify since uh, most people here are interested in uh, open source software for neuromorphic computing. Wanted to clarify, um, we touched upon that earlier, the different parts of, of Lava and uh, which parts are open source and which aren't. Um, if you go to GitHub, um, to, and I'll show you what that looks like later, um, Lava-NC, uh, then you'll see everything that is in this bright blue color here. Um, and this is throughout the entire uh, software stack. It goes uh, from from these uh, algorithm libraries that Andreas uh, talked about, uh, different processes, the, the whole uh, API of Lava of, of processes and how they communicate with each other through the compiler, through the runtime, um, uh, all the way down to a single hardware backend, which is uh, currently CPU and GPU, as we talked about. And all of that is um, open source and it's distributed via GitHub. Uh, there's documentation and tutorials, which I'll, uh, I'll run through some uh, in a bit. And I think all of the code here is in, in Python or in Jupyter notebooks. Um, and this will enable you to run uh, these, these basic, uh, basic functionality, uh, also of the algorithm libraries on a CPU. If you then want to run this on Loihi, first you need to, uh, to get access to Loihi and that uh, is through a, a, standard, a, pro, a standardized process on our end where you have to become a member of the INRC, which that came up earlier. This is the Intel Neuromorphic Research Community. Um, it's a community uh, of, of people who are interested in building something on, on uh, top of Luigi. Um, and with this, you get access to um, a cloud access to Luigi um, and for particular projects. Um, and if you uh, have hardware um, requirements, then you can also get access to an actual Luigi system uh, in your lab. And you get access to these, uh, these orange boxes here, which are uh, extensions to the software stack sort of a, along a horizontal uh, area that ex extends it with um, capabilities that let you run, run things on uh, Luigi. And you'll, you'll see then uh, in this extension, you get uh, new behavior in, in terms of new processes, new process models, an extension to the compiler uh, that you know, optimizes things to, to run on, on the Wiki itself, uh, an extension to the runtime, um, and then also low level software um, that is sort of a register level uh, software to the chip itself. Um, and the, we, we made the split here between the, uh, the dark, <laughs> dark red, which is really the proprietary part and the very close to hardware. Um, and that will probably remain uh, proprietary um, indefinitely. But the, the orange parts are, they are currently proprietary, um, but large parts of that could actually become open source code. The problem currently is that some portions of that code um, um, make, well, make information about the chip visible, which we would like to, to hide. So there, there's a task in there where uh, we would like to extract that and then make as much of the, the orange boxes here um, open source as we can. 
Um, that that com code will not allow you to then run something on the wiki because you, you wouldn't have access to the wiki if, if you're not part of the NRC. Uh, but it could at least um, foster collaboration and you could see, you know, this is how they're doing the compiler for, for the wiki, at least in part, um, and then maybe motivate people to, to write a similar compiler for a different hardware backend. I would say that would be a big motivation, I think, for to add like other backends. Uh, I mean, for example, for Sinsense to be to make the debate. Uh, yeah, yeah. To say, okay. Yeah, it, it it would be interesting to see how much of that can be reused uh, also for other uh, hardware backends and uh, and how how flexible it would be uh, to to in integrate other things. So it's it's all built to be integratable. So these gray boxes here are uh, meant to show that. It's designed such that you could uh, add another compiler for, let's say, Sinsense hardware, for instance, or something else. Um, but we've only done this for for Python now and for the um, neuro um, neuro proc or is it neuro core compiler, and for our embedded cores, this is the C. Um, yeah, we'd have to see how, how flexible those structures are. Makes sense. It's good, it's good to hear that that there's there would be interest in that. Yeah, it's just a, it's mostly a technical and sort of a legal. A challenge on our end. Uh, it's not not that we're not willing to do that. Okay, so and then uh, we we've talked a, a lot about the sort of high level concepts and these um, more also uh, algorithmic ideas. I wanted to take a step back. There was also a comment uh, earlier on in the, uh, in the in the questions that people are new to Lava, and I wanted to maybe take a step back here and and briefly go through sort of the basics of what what is Lava, what does that look like and feel like, and what are the the basic lava concepts. Um, we, we've mentioned processes quite a bit. Um, a, a process is lava's fundamental building block. Any application or algorithm that we build uh, on, in, in lava is composed of processes, and th these are these black boxes here. Um, and a process is you know, just some component of, um, of an application, and that could be um, for instance, a wrapper around a, an event-based camera, or it could be some Python code that does something, um, or it could be a, a neural network that does some classification task. Um, and these processes um, communicate with each other through uh, channels and they send message tokens. So uh, it's, it's all via message passing. Um, and one of the core principles here is that these, these processes only offer a, a high level API, but the, the behavior and how and on which backend that is implemented can potentially be switched out. So you could have a, a process uh, description here that you know, specifies some, some classifier and the, there's an implementation in Python and there's another implementation on the Luigi NeuroCore. Um, and both of these can be can be switched out and would, would be have, have either the same behavior or approximately the same behavior. Um, a process itself um, can be visualized like this, where uh, you know, we're now looking sort of from the side on this black box, um, and it has inputs and outputs where uh, these channels are connected to, and where it can then communicate to other processes. Um, so inputs is where data goes in, outputs is where data goes out, and then um, internal state and behavior are uh, variables inside of, of a process that, that keep this data around. Um, in, in code, if you look at one of these process um, definitions, it, it would look something like this. Um, everything derives from you know, the abstract process class. Um, you then have uh, init method, um, but more, more interestingly, you, you define imports and outports with particular tensor valued um, shapes here. So uh, this is, these are the, the green ones and um, these are the purple ones. Variables um, can be specified similarly. And then you have optionally other API methods that users can call. If you then want to connect these, let's say you have um, multiple processes like this, um, you instantiate two processes, you can then uh, create connections between them by calling the connect method on, on an output port. Uh, it also works on input ports, but uh, here, for instance, one process, this one, has an output port, which is called out1. And from there, we want to connect to another process. 
process two to this uh, input port, for instance. And this creates a channel, and then you can, this process can communicate to this uh, second process over the channel. Um, from the output port, you can then send messages, but that's mostly done automatically. Um, and uh, it would send message tokens on the input port. Uh, you can then receive, you can, you can peek on the port or just see whether there's something on the channel. So this establishes communication. Um, and then this I, I touched up on before. So uh, just to, to get the, the names right, the, the process is the high level API and then the different behavioral implementations that I mentioned before. So an implementation in Python or an implementation on an embedded core on the wiki that's a, written in C or an implementation on the neural core we call these process models. So th there is encoded what the behavior is of the process. There's also something we call a sub-process model that allows you to specify the behavior in terms of other processes. And you can then imagine that uh, that leads to a hierarchy that in the end specifies uh, the behavior a hierarchy of processes where the, the lowest, so the, the leaves of this tree implement the behavior. Um, and Sorry. Uh, Good. Yeah. So, question for me. So, what um, from a yeah for for a layman uh, or what what uh, does the the principle or the concept of a process allow you to do that the the concept of a layer as we know it maybe from Keras or PyTorch um, does not allow you to do. I mean, supposedly you have inputs outputs. You can um, compute something. You can put it on different devices. Uh, you can have your custom code. Maybe could you compare a bit uh, the, I guess, well-known concept of a layer to processes more generally? Like, I guess one thing, I'm not sure whether it's contained in the process itself, uh, but one thing is that all processes are uh, communicate with each other by message passing. Uh, I'm not sure that that is the, so that's the default for it, for any process. Um, and that is, in, in line with this idea of um, everything being event-based in a way. Um, I'm not sure whether that is uh, the case in, in Keras and in other or similar frameworks uh, where they're, they're often sort of, you know, uh, time step based kind of things. Um, I would also add that uh, I, I would view a process a slightly bit more general than just a layer because yeah in Keras you think about or in PyTorch you think about neural networks all the time I mean that's the I guess the mm -hmm. basic uh, component here but um, a process doesn't just have to be something associated with a neural network um, it's just a, it's maybe a more generalized type of layer because a process can also implement something else it can also implement some sort of management process that works in the background acting on other processes doing something or it could be just something you wouldn't typically describe as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a layer in a neural network. So therefore we didn't just wanna limit ourselves to this notion of a layer in, in neural networks. And, and th so that is one aspect where we chose this other name. As Matisse has said, um, 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 it's more of an event-based, message passing-based programming paradigm. So um, yeah, we wanted to differentiate us from a layer in that respect as well um, by um, using process for, yeah, parallel processes that can communicate via messages in an asynchronous matter, uh, manner with each other. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, right, so different process models. Um, and then uh, if there are no more questions on that, I would go through a, a few basic examples, um, actually going through uh, Jupyter tutorials. So there's, there's a bunch of tutorials that we already have um, in um, in public GitHub, and I'll point you to, uh, to, to a few, but let's maybe have a, have a brief look at, at one um, that is sort of an end-to-end -end tutorial. I'll skip over, I'll skip into my... Um, Sorry, Matisse, there's actually more questions about the, the processes. Sure. Can I yeah. relay oh, some of those? So the process sends messages in packets. Are these packets transferred asynchronously? If so, how is this achieved? Uh, because you probably know this better than me. Yeah, so um, in principle, everything is asynchronous um, at the lowest level. However, um, just like in Louis, 
um, you still need a form of synchronization um, because otherwise things could just go haywire and um, not become deterministic. So um, the, 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 lava, the fundamental lava process framework is totally asynchronous and it's up to the user who uses these processes and builds stuff, stuff out of that to make sure that, I don't know, you achieve some sort of synchronization or some sort of um, um, request acknowledge based uh, uh, handshaking protocol. But let's say now we're using Lava for programming Loihi, and then we're adopting um, the Loihi synchronization protocol. And Loihi uses barrier synchronization for synchronizing multiple processes. And what this means is that, um, well, overall, when we run neural networks, spiking neural networks, we're solving time, disc time discretized differential equations, um, first order differential equations, time step by time step. So what we do there in the Lewy synchronization protocol that we also use in Lava is that at the beginning of each algorithmic time step, we basically launch the internal operations of every process. Then they do stuff, they exchange messages, they collect the messages that they receive from their input processes. And when they're done, they're basically doing this mutual handshaking, this barrier, this barrier synchronization to collectively agree on, okay, now we're done with the work for a particular algorithmic time step T plus five. And then you collectively transition to T plus six. And so you can okay. implement, so, so this, is, this is the native synchronization protocol that Luigi uses. Um, and in, in terms of using Luigi within Lava, we adopt the same synchronization protocol, but you can do totally asynchronous or your own custom protocols in Lava. And then you, if you run a net, like a workload on a CPU and then on Loihi, you will get the same results, even though uh, they're being computed asynchronously. On, because on we're using this barrier synchronization protocol, um, mm. everything within a time step is in principle asynchronous and not deterministic because one process could just be faster than the other process. But by the end of the time step when everyone is done with their work and does the handshaking then we know okay we're back in a deterministic state yeah. hmm. and here's a related question as well from the audience so what happens if i have a zero weight um, so i guess this is this means for example uh, if i train my network using slayer lava dl and i have uh, i prune some of the network connections what happens on loy here will Will it, is there some kind of zero skipping algorithm in the hardware? Uh, so I assume this is I, I assume this is not relating to messaging, but just the fact that you can have sparse, sparse weight matrices. So oh yeah, okay. So on Luigi, obviously, I mean, uh, if so, if you have a process, we actually have such processes called sparse and dense um, in 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 Lava, and so um, you can if you run them on CPU. Well, then it's up to you. You can use um, um, sparse mat matrix arithmetic to implement them sparsely, obviously, and, and don't waste compute. On Luigi itself, we obviously have hardware acceleration to both implement and store sparse connectivity matrices efficiently. And since the whole architecture is event-based, we obviously also uh, efficiently um, process these sparse matrices. So yeah, Luigi, in one, one, one major characteristic of Luigi is obviously that it's a, a sparse matrix accelerator. Makes sense. Thanks a lot. Okay. And if that's it, I would go into the um, examples. Maybe we can cut this short a little bit because I think we only have half an hour left. So I, I wanted to um, quickly point you to, to the GitHub page. So this is github.com slash lava minus nc. This is where you will find the repositories of the public version of Lava and also the, the algorithm library. So you'll see Lava DL here, Lava optimization, and so on. If you go into um, each of them, there will be a section for tutorials for Lava. This is under uh, tutorials directly here. Um, and then there's there's two sections of, of tutorials. One is we call that end to end. These are tutorials um, that are sort of application level, if, if you will. Um, so very simple though. Um, MNIST digit classification, you can see an example for how that's implemented in Lava, uh, another excitatory inhibit uh, inhibitory network. And then this, which I, I'll run through in a bit, which is sort of uh, an overview of all the Lava features uh, in, in one tutorial and running that. There's other tutorials that I, I just wanted to point you to um, for self-study. Uh, we call those in-depth 
So the, the kinds of concepts that I quickly ran over, you know, in, in terms of processes and uh, and process models, they're all uh, explained here in depth, starting from how to install Lava to what is the process and what is the process model with code examples and also examples of how you would implement your own process in your own process model. Um, I wanted to quickly go through the um, this tutorial here. Um, I'll jump over a few things. I just wanted to show you sort of the, the, um, the bits and pieces of how you would assemble processes and then run something. Um, so this, this tutorial covers a, a lot more starting from the software stack. Um, and um, so here are two examples of processes that are part of Lava itself. Um, there's the uh, leak integrate and fire neuron process uh, and, so, and a process for dense connectivity. Uh, these can be imported, then you can have a look at the documentation if you want. Um, but um, these, this here, this code snippet in, um, instantiates uh, processes. So it instantiates a population of diff neurons. In this case, these are just three neurons um, with you know, particular threshold and uh, decay of voltage and, um, and current. Um, it also specifies here the bias, different bias values for these uh, individual neurons. This goes back to the, the question we had earlier. Um, so it is possible to, to specify uh, different values um, for the individual neurons. You can do that as a list or as a, as a tuple. Um, it, that may not be implemented for every process um, and or maybe also not for every process model. I'm, I'm not sure. So, uh, But in principle, it's, it's there. Um, I think in some cases, what we do is just take the uh, is somehow assume that there's a single value, which is uh, really not, not correct in that case, but um, should, be, should be doable in principle. So this is one population of three neurons. Uh, there's a second population here. And then there's dense connectivity as a third process then in lava, which is uh, just connection weights. And uh, here it's just you know, random weights between these two populations. Um, and then I showed this before. Uh, let's skip over this. You can then connect the output port of, of this first population to the input port of dense. This is sort of doing this kind of thing that I showed before. Um, and then connect dense to the second population, second lift population. Um, and then uh, run, run this little network of three processes. And the, the execution, um, so in the end, what you do is call a run function on one of the processes, doesn't matter which one, it, it just, uh, if they're connected, it will find the little network of, of, of connected processes. Um, and you specify two, two parameters here. One is a run condition that specifies how long it's going to run for and in what mode. So you can either run it, uh, run it continuously. So this is one condition where it's just going to run continuously until you call stop or pause, or you can specify a predetermined number of steps that you want to run for, and this then I don't know, 10 um, time steps and then it will stop automatically. Um, that's the first thing that you specify, and the second is uh, a run config. And that's really the, uh, the point where you as a user have um, an, an impact on where it runs on what hardware backend. Um, and this is one, one particular point in Lava where uh, this idea of being able to implement a process on different process, uh, different hardware backends, um, you, can, um, you can switch the hardware backend here with one variable. Um, so this is a particular configuration here that um, automatically selects um, process models that simulate Luihi, um, well, it's called Luihi1. Uh, so it's a Python simulation of that. Um, and there's a, a, a similar configuration that then chooses if available implementations on the wiki. Um, and you just have to switch out this, um, this one run, run configuration. Um, yes, and then uh, I skipped over this before, but you can, you can monitor what goes on in the neurons as, as they run, and, the, and you can uh, plot the data. So this is over time. Uh, this is the voltage of one um, population of the 
first population, this is the voltage of the second population. Um, to stop it, you, you can just call stop this as a pause. Um, right? And there's, there's more detail in this, um, in this tutorial, which, which I'm not going to go through now. Um, similarly, there's, uh, I'll get rid of this here. There are similar tutorials for, um, for the different algorithm libraries. So uh, one thing that I, I wanted to point to here is uh, we, we've talked about Lava, Lava DL before. Um, that's in this in this other repository, and Andreas already mentioned that there are these three parts to um, to Lava DL where there's uh, Slayer, which enables uh, direct training of deep event-based networks. There's Bootstrap that is for training rate-based um, SNNs, um, and then uh, there's also um, this external module to call. Um, and all of, they, uh, all of them are for training. And the output of that is, is an HDF5 file that, that captures the, the train network. And then you can use another module in LavaDL, uh, NetX, to, um, to instantiate this in Lava and then run it either in simulation or run it on, on the chip uh, as Lava processes. And uh, I wanted to quickly show you what that looks like. There's a one of the tutorials in, in LavaDL uh, does that for um, for the pilot net data set in, in, in Lava. Um, so if you go to the Lava DL tutorials down here for Slayer um, and pilot net, Slayer is then the, the training part. Um, and there's another tutorial that shows you how this can be used, used in, in that Excel. I'll show that in a second. So pilot net um, is a data set of uh, you know, dashboard camera that looks at, a, at the street. Um, of somebody driving around, um, and the the task here for for this um, for this network is to predict the steering angle of the car just from from this visual input here. Um, and the the point we're making with this tutorial is that you can do this with um, with a sigma delta neural network that encodes the data in a different way than than an artificial neural network would do. You can imagine that this is brain based data coming in. And any frame is going to be very similar to the frame before. For instance, this, this skyline here is not going to change at all. The road is probably not going to change much from frame to frame. Uh, but in an artificial neural network, you would pipe that data through the, the whole network, um, irrespective of there being very little change. And um, with uh, an SDNN, you can uh, leverage this um, very, very large overlap in the data. Um, by just encoding um, the difference to the previous frame. So there's a, um, on the output side of, of one of these neurons, there's a, a, a delta encoder that really just looks at the difference and sends out um, the value of the, you know, the, the difference value. On the input stage, uh, there's a, a sigma decoder, which sort of integrates these changes over time. And then you can imagine that if you do that in all the layers, um, and you only process the differences, uh, you drastically reduce the, the amount of information that has to go through the, uh, through the network. Um, so this tutorial, I won't go through the details, but it, it basically sets up, um, using Slayer, it sets up a network like that. Um, it, it does that using you know, the PyTorch um, kind, of, kind of tools where you, you generate a, a, a network. Um, it, um, Using blocks that are defined in um, in Lava DL for these sigma delta neurons, for instance, uh, it sets up different convolution layers and different dense layers and input output layers, um, and then trains the network um, uh, uh, as we go. It instantiates instantiates the network here and uh, an optimization strategy and um, that you know pulling in the data set and so on goes through the training and then the thing I'm, I'm trying to look for, you can see that the, the arrow is going down. But in the end, you export the network, in this case, the, the best state of the network, export that as a HDF5 file. So that's a, a file representation of the, of the train network. And you can then load that in uh, NetX and generate um, a Lava process out of that. And, and that's something I wanted to show you here. So that's another tutorial that basically starts from there and um, 
shows how you can use NetX to then um, run something on the key. Um, Sorry, so, Matis, a quick yeah. question here. Uh, so it looks like from this HDF5 interface, would it be possible to train a network in any of the many other SNN training libraries available? And then given the same structure, I assume, assume this is mostly like the parameters that are this HDF5 file uh, to, to then convert, um, to run it on, on Lohi. Do you think that's feasible? Um, well, it, if one thing that I, I sort of glossed over here, but um, in building the network, here, this is using um, layers that are that, that are defined in in LavaDL itself. So the sigma delta um, kind of kind of neurons. Um, if those are compatible with n, so this is for training. Uh, if those are then compatible with what you do on the chip, then that would probably be uh, possible. Um, but you have to make sure that the the neurons and you know what you use for training do the same thing than uh, what you then later do on on the chip. If that makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it so would you, be a really exciting project potentially to just build basically bridges to other training frameworks because yeah, well, we have a natural bias to Slayer or Slayer two. Um, but yeah, we at least built this one uh, anchor point here, which is NetX or the um, and this HDF file format, uh, where we could potentially now have other frameworks come in, just like you said. Um, we haven't done it, obviously, but um, um, that would be a great community project to maybe extend support um, in that direction um, to Loi and Lava from other directions. Um, so for so, example, if there was good documentation available, what how of the structure how this HDF file should look like. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I think uh, I could definitely imagine other frameworks implementing this to support your 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 backend um, like easily. Yeah. Yeah. So if other, I mean, other training frameworks are faster, um, as I hear, than than Slayer and training um, event-based neural networks. So um, if people just prefer to use this, um, yeah, it it might just be more economic than rather than transporting all this to Slayer, um, potentially to just build a link to NetX. Nice. Thank you. Um, I really wanted to sort of do the, the follow-up then. If, if you then have that description of the network, um, how do we then, then run this on, on Luigi? And uh, this tutorial, um, I've now opened this here in, um, in, in a notebook uh, exactly, but the, um, the point of this tutorial is to actually create the processes. Um, so all these boxes here are processes. And uh, then execute it on um, on the chip. So I can maybe quickly run run through that. There's um, there's different processes here to load the data set to then encode the data as it flows through in, into differences. Um, this thing, this process here is really what you uh, what is created when you load the HDF5 file. There's a process that uh, decodes the output and you know into the steering angle. And then things for, for logging and for monitoring, uh, which you'll hopefully see in a second. Um, this is, yeah, maybe this is taking too long to, to execute. Um, uh, let's maybe have that running in the background. Um, so we this also is just have like a couple of slides left and uh, 20 yeah. minutes time left. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so maybe then, since I haven't uh, executed that, maybe let's leave it. Uh, at that, so the, the the point here is that with with this line, um, what happens is you you read in the uh, HDF5 file, um, and NetX then automatically generates a process from that, which um, encodes you know the, the structure of the network uh, and all the weights that have been trained into this process, and you can then just use it as part of a, a larger network of processes, um, you know, piping in data in and out. Um, I was going to show that this is running on um, on Luigi with you know with with all these uh, things. You can then actually see uh, how it's going through one you know little snippet of uh, of this input and uh, in in real time estimates the steering angle. But maybe let's let's skip over that for now um, and go back to uh, the presentation. 
Um, one thing that we wanted to go through is um, current development uh, highlights. So things that we've been working on um, uh, in the last couple of months and are, are hoping to release in the, in the near future. Um, there was a, a lava release um, last month, but it was really just minor feature additions, a tutorial. There was, um, we added um, support for state probes for synaptic delays, but most of it was really uh, bug fixes because we're currently preparing for a larger feature release. Um, so some, some things that we already touched upon, um, sparse compression and multiple dendritic accumulators, those are sort of in the pipeline. Uh, they're about to be released with the next release. Um, but overall, we're working on supporting um, or having major support for real-time vision app uh, capabilities. And I wanted to um, sort of sketch what, what the plan is there. Um, overall, the, the kinds of systems that we want to support um, with Lava also um, are uh, you know, vision applications where you have a real-time stream of data going coming from some, some camera, maybe a regular RGB camera or a 3D camera like the RealSense that Intel is producing or some event-based camera, um, some stream of vision input going through some peripheral interface um, into Loihi, essentially. Um, and usually the, the, the setup that we have is that there's a host computer um, in the loop, so where the, you know, maybe the DVS is co connected to over USB and um, the host computer uh, connects them to Loihi. Uh, there's another path that we're sort of on the horizon thinking about where there's a direct asynchronous uh, hardware interface between a camera directly in, uh, in Loihi. Um, but for now, it, it'll probably be over a, a host CPU. And then you could also imagine that there's other accelerators like GPUs um, in sort of in this system. And on top of the system layer, there's a, a software layer that we're now actively working on. Um, <clears throat> all of these components here, um, well, ex except for, we're, we're working on all of these components. These parts here on the left, these uh, purple, are going to be processes in Lava that we're working on um, on all of them. Um, so that is support for uh, streaming from regular um, RGB cameras, from RealSense uh, cameras, um, and then also having pre-processing on that. Similarly, for event-based cameras, we're working to, uh, to have processes that support the prophecy kinds of cameras and cameras from, from innovation. Um, and then also have uh, pre-processing for those. For that, we're actually working on integrating Tonic um, into Lava su such that you have a process and you can, you can plug in you know, transformations from Tonic into that process, uh, or maybe integrate directly into here. Uh, I haven't decided on that. Um, so that you can, on the CPU, um, you know, get data or already pre-processed before you sh ship it into the chip. Um, this is for input. For output, we would really like to have a module, and we're working on that, um, to have live visualization of, uh, of spike output so that you can, for live demonstrations, for instance, uh, show directly what is currently happening, happening in the chip in real time. Um, and then one thing that uh, my team is uh, working on at the moment is, uh, uh, we call it I.O. bridge currently, which is to enable connecting a, a, um, a network of Lava processes to some other software infrastructure. For instance, that you're able to have some Python code running in some thread, for instance, and, and you're able to exchange data either uh, going in or going out um, into this, this kind of bridge process. And so, so this is for Python. And similarly, we are planning on building a, a ROS bridge that allows you to tap into ROS nodes that run somewhere on the network um, you know, to get access to different devices or to simulation environments. Um, all of this goes through, uh, so currently the, the input output that we do and that we have to our chip goes through the embedded processors uh, on Loihi, which is a bottleneck at the moment. And um, we're working internally on enabling a different path. Uh, Loihi has next to the, these embedded processes with they just run C programs. Um, 
there are cores um, dedicated to uh, event-based input output um, at, at a high speed. So this enables um, at the most uh, 10 gigabit of, um, uh, of uh, data rates through, through Ethernet. Um, and then, you know, you can, uh, th that would enable these, uh, these real-time capabilities of, uh, of streaming data in and out to, um, to neuromorphic algorithms running all over you. Um, I'll skip over that. And maybe here I would hand over to Andreas uh, to talk about upcoming more application examples. Do you want to take the share again? I hope I did. Can you still see the same slide? I think I'm still sharing though. I'll stop that for now. Oh, yeah, looks, looks like it's working. Okay, so yeah, um, let's quickly touch on a couple more um, areas of current work. Um, so some of the feedback that we got from the community, um, which we um, wholeheartedly agree is that um, Lava is still light on um, application level um, um, examples and tutorials. We have some like um, in our optimization library or the pilot net example, but it's still yeah relatively sparse. We don't have that many application level examples or high level application examples. So we're trying to change that. And um, these are some examples of, of um, algorithms or workloads um, that we're trying to build as demonstrations of what you can do with Lava and Loihi um, in the signal processing domain. So on the um, on, on this side or on this corner up here, um, we're currently working on a DNN-based rather conventional approach to um, uh, object detection and localization, basically by um, uh, building a network that does YOLO-based uh, um, object detection localization um, on Loihi. Uh, we're, we're going to enable it uh, first with RGB-based input um, using this high-speed I.O. link that uh, Mattis just mentioned, uh, as well as for DVS or prophecy um, input. So that's something to come hopefully in the next release. Um, it's uh, not quite done, but um, in the pipeline. Um, a similar approach or, uh, or a related approach to object detection, uh, but somewhat um, different uh, or less conventional is this one down here, which we're also working on or Mattis is working on, um, where we're trying to use um, feedback driven attention to object detection. Basically we would start out maybe with a high resolution um, or large size input image or frame or video frame, for instance, either DVS or RGB. Um, then we'd uh, um, compress this down to a lower resolution but full size image where we may uh, detect uh, some sort of um, regions of interest or, um, or apply a saliency map um, to figure out where something of interest is. And then we would use that maybe driven by top-down um, uh, attention to then um, cut out from the high resolution um, input frame, uh, the region of interest that we care about. And then we could apply classifiers and things like that, um, or even online learning modules um, to, this, to this ROI. Some of you might be aware of our um, Intel um, uh, dynamic noise suppression challenge, which comes with a big monetary price. Um, we, re we announced and released this uh, challenge soon. If you want to learn more about it, you can do this here. You can find more about this um, um, in this link. Uh, but um, uh, in order to support this challenge, uh, we've also built our own solution to um, audio noise, uh, de audio denoising or noise suppression. And uh, we're, we'll, we'll soon release our baseline um, Lava Loihi um, implementation of this of this application uh, through our GitHub um, as well, um, and then another one we're working on is um, optical flow uh, with RF neurons, so resonate and fire neurons, uh, very different, uh, um, very exciting type of um, neuron model that uh, that's something that uh, uses also capabilities of Loihi two with. Um, uh, published already some early work on this um, on CPU simulation a little ago, a while ago, uh, showing great gains compared to state of the art uh, solutions um, for for optical flow. So yeah, these are some hopefully more impactful, exciting applications than what you can do with Lava today on Loihi um, that will come soon. Hopefully in yeah, I think as I said <laughs> a couple of times, hopefully end of the month or uh, at latest in July in our release in July. So that's one aspect. Um, another new development that I'll get to in a moment is um, uh, what, what we're working on towards online on-chip learning. As you know, Loihi supports online on-chip learning. Um, and as some of you may also know, the degree to which Loihi, and of course the CPU simulation of Loihi, supports on-chip learning 
is by specifying programmable learning rules in this syntax of sum of product rules. So basically, you can specify products of factors with scaling constants that you can sum up to implement different types of local learning rules that you can execute on low on chip uh, very efficiently. Um, and so um, we, we've supported this for a while. We've also released this basic capability already um, in, in, in Lava um, to support um, this type, these types of things. And we're currently ex now extending and building on top of this uh, to, do, to apply to two different um, let's say higher level applications that make this a bit more interesting and usable. One is a continual learning prototype classifier that I'll get to in a moment and this differential neural, neural plasticity uh, that I mentioned on the side, um, uh, I don't know, in the beginning of the presentation. So a few words on this um, continual learning prototype classifier that is not released yet. Uh, we're working on this internally, but again, should come soon. Um, what this does is this is an approach to doing um, continual and online learning on chip in a local manner. So meaning uh, basically using local learning rules and not um, learning distributed across many layers um, where you basically have some input, some samples, maybe a um, connection, uh, some sort of connection layer or some, some weights uh, feeding into some neurons or prototype neurons. And what this type of classifier is capable of is basically um, it's a, it's, a, it's a single layer solution for local learning. Um, and it learns basically um, templates or prototypes of the patterns that you show that you show it over time. And you can learn these um, incrementally, continually over time, um, uh, basically by uh, you showing it various observations or instances of different patterns. Over time, it can basically form this kind of centroid prototype um, if you also provided, let's say, the red label, so it can it can learn that continually. Um, if you then show it other samples of other classes over time, it can learn them as well. Um, and then um, it can also adapt its representation over time. Um, for instance, if you then show outliers, um, um, and then you can basically provide negative or positive um, uh, um, updates such that you can basically extend this manifold in feature space over time uh, to represent yeah, um, certain types of uh, certain types of classes and so on. Um, and um, so, so what this classifier is basically um, what this consists of is basically it's uh, it's it's this um, layer of plastic weights which uses a certain type of learning rule um, using this mechanism here. Um, it has these prototype neurons that you can allocate over time to um, represent um, incrementally new classes. And then there is an accompanying state machine uh, that partially executes as part of these neural layers and partially um, um, on the embedded Loihi course to then implement a complex state machine to allocate these prototype neurons over time and extend their, uh, basically their reach in feature space. So what this thing can do is uh, it can do novelty-based detection. So there is, a, there is a feature in there that allows to detect when a new sample, a new observation is like novel, and then uh, we can either make it part of uh, an existing class or we can allocate a, a totally new uh, class automatically as part of the state machine. Um, and then of course, as I mentioned multiple times indirectly, it does one-shot learning, um, continue learning, and um, thereby achieves things like open set recognition. So this is an, I think, an exciting new capability that will come soon that we're working on right now. And, um, how much time do I have left? A few minutes. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned our um, constraint optimization library a um, couple of times earlier. Um, this is just to say that we're extending this uh, more and more. We have uh, now a couple of core um, optimization solvers um, as part of the Lava optimization library. And we're currently building on top of this uh, now somewhat more relevant and interesting applications that use these core solvers, such as model predictive control for robot robotic control or, um, or vehicle routing and other scheduling solutions and motion planning um, for, um, let's say, robotic arms or navigating in, um, in, 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 in environments with obstacles. So these are some of the ex uh, exciting developments that are in progress um, in this optimization domain. And then just, uh, just very briefly, I just wanna mention a couple of um, community projects that have 
been ongoing over the past uh, months and, and even year, um, uh, which are the following. So we have one team from uh, George Mason University and, uh, and NRL that have built a um, Bayesian optimization solver that's already committed to uh, Lava GitHub. So you can find it as part of the Lava optimization library. That's a pure con a community contribution. Uh, currently supports only the CPU backend. The Luigi backend support is um, in progress. Then we have another uh, contribution from Pacific Northwest National Lab. Um, they have basically revamped our old LCA or Lasso solver that we already supported in NX SDK for Loihi 1. Now they've brought it basically back um, to Loihi 2. Um, so we have um, this uh, ability to, do, to solve sparse coding problems, for instance, or Lasso problems in general, again, through Lava on Loihi 2. Um, we're working with another, with another group of teams from MIT Oak Ridge National Lab and University of Bonn on um, uh, supporting simulated annealing for solving constraint um, or discrete constraint optimization problem um, um, over time. And then um, with another team from uh, Lulea University, um, we're, we're um, helping them or um, use our quadratic programming solver um, and model predictive control tool uh, to apply this to robotic um, uh, to robotic scenarios um, like this uh, spot robot here exploring mines in I think Finland. Um, so um, that's an that's an application that's a more application oriented. Uh, um, uh, contribution that will come from this team um, in hopefully the near future. And then, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, there is a team from University of Göttingen um, uh, of, around Christian Tetzlaff's group uh, who has already built the Brian to Lava interface. Um, and as the name, name implies, it's an interface that allows you to use Brian to models, uh, map them to Lava, such that you can deploy it, for instance, to Loihi. Right now, um, uh, it only also supports the CPU backend through Lava, but they're working on the Louis 2 backend. Um, and so if you want to learn more about that, uh, just Google for Brian to Lava, and you can learn more about uh, what they're up to um, with this project. And then um, with these teams here, um, we're working on this um, differential plasticity uh, utility that, as I mentioned also in the beginning, um, allows uh, you to include basically the Louis learning engine so this capability to run learning rules on chip to, so 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 basically we can then optimize learning rules online learning rules on chip learning rules um we, we, we can in incorporate them in the in the offline training uh loop um to optimize um the overall online learning um ability uh, during runtime okay um we just made it to the end in time um I don't know, we can, me and Mattis, we can probably stay a little longer if there are any questions. Um, so, uh, but otherwise, um, if you wanna learn more about the INRC, um, if you're interested in joining the Intel Neuromorphic Research Community, then you can go here and learn more. There are links to sign up. And um, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, so thank you very much for your questions and attention. And um, as I said, if there are any other questions, then I'm happy to stick around a little longer. Thanks a lot, Andreas and Matis. It was, it was really interesting, uh, really amazing what you guys have put together in, in all this time. Really, really cool things. Also, the applications, I feel like you should just show them in the beginning, like to just like tease these people a bit <laughs> what is possible with this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I actually had them in the beginning. Matis thought it's maybe better to put them towards the end of the examples. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. So I, I think. Uh, like we've already had uh, like many many questions so um i think we can i'm happy to wrap it up here um so yeah thanks a lot um, for your time uh, if fabrizio and jason have any uh, do you guys want to say anything else no all good i see that there is just one last question from the audience uh, if i'm not mistaken yeah go ahead <laughs> Uh, so I did check the latest version of Lava, uh, and uh, if I know it correctly, and in that uh, tutorial, so for probes, it says the states of custom new microcoded neurons are not are currently not available for probing. Uh, so is a probing uh, microcoded, or uh, how can we use that function? Matis, can you comment on this one? I'm maybe not up to date. I uh, I honestly don't know. No. 
I'd have to look at the board. That might be something to answer offline, I, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. look into that. Cool. You can always file an issue on GitHub and then we'll get back to you. Great. So um, for those who are still around, this talk was has been recorded and will be put on YouTube as well. Uh, if um, also Andreas and Matisa are uh, fine with that. And uh, yeah, so then uh, thanks a lot for the session again and uh, have a good uh, have a good day or night or evening wherever you are. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks very for much. having us. Yep. Thank, Thank you very much. You. And uh, uh, thanks for your attention and have a great rest of your day.